right, so we're going to look at um, some direct applications of osmosis. Um, we're looking at three types of situations that cells find themselves in. And we're going to look at um, the stuff in a solution, uh, which is going to be what's surrounding the cell on the outside. All right, so in this first cell up here, we see that the stuff on the outside is much less than the stuff on the inside. And so this is what we call a hypotonic environment, hypo meaning less. In the next cell, uh, we see that there's more stuff on the outside of the cell than there is on the inside. So uh, we use the prefix hyper um, to indicate that there's more stuff on the outside. This is a hypertonic solution that the cell is in. And in the last one, um, this stuff on the outside and on the inside is equal. Uh, and so we call this an isotonic environment, iso meaning equal. Um, and from the last video, recall we talked about osmosis, which is the natural diffusion of water. Um, and so we're going to look at how osmosis will take place in each of these situations. Um, in the first cell, the hypotonic environment, you're going to see the water moving into the cell to balance the, uh, the ratio of stuff to water out. Uh, in the hypertonic, the water is going to naturally move out of the cell. In the isotonic, uh, the water will flow freely back and forth in equal amounts, uh, just maintaining that homeostasis like we talked about, um, the balance between the inside and the outside. Uh, to understand this a little bit further, let's look a little bit closer at what the plasma membrane looks like. Uh, the plasma membrane, again, surrounding the cell, um, it's made up of two layers of what are called phospholipids. Um, and they basically look like one round end and then two little tails. And they form a double layer like this all the way around the cell. And within this double layer of phospholipids you find uh, sometimes proteins spanning the entire length, sometimes not quite all the way through. Uh, you find some other things uh, on the outside of the cell, some steroids, carbohydrates, um, different things like that that allow the cell to do uh, certain functions. Um, and then again you have water on the outside and inside of the cell. which will freely move uh, through this plasma membrane. So you can see how, how the water is able to actually move inside and out of the cell right through this membrane. And uh, this natural movement um, is one example of passive transport, uh, transport of molecules or whatever it is um, inside and out of a cell that does not require energy. And there's also, um, we'll touch on real quick, uh, let's say that we have some stuff on the outside and the inside of the cell. Again, salt, glucose, some sort of molecule. Um, it can actually be transferred through the membrane uh, via one of these proteins. Um, and it can actually do this against the concentration gradient. So we looked at um, diffusion moving from a lot of stuff to a little. Uh, with the help of these proteins, some stuff can actually move where from a little stuff to a lot. Um, and this is, this is called active transport. And it's active because uh, it requires energy. It needs some sort of energy source to do this because it's not a natural, a natural movement uh, such as diffusion. So that concludes um, this third video on cellular solutions.